Welcome to the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. I'm Kim McLaughlin, your host. I am a licensed psychotherapist, coach, blogger, and best-selling author. Today we're talking about overcoming candy cravings. Find food freedom this Halloween with intuitive eating. We're going to talk about three reasons why candy scares us and some really important questions to ask yourself, as well as my personal story with Halloween and candy. Let's get started. I did get a question about Halloween candy, and I've been hearing about this a lot more. So I thought we'd talk about that. So let's just talk about that because I've talked about this a lot before. What I lovingly refer to this time of year is called the holiday trifecta, October 1 to December 31st, three months where we're really looking at a lot of food. And um, I've been doing this long enough to where the food doesn't bother me like it used to, but I was just listening to one of my podcasts, one of my old podcasts, and I remember how much it used to bother me about Halloween time and and the and the holidays. So I thought we should talk about that and just give you some helpful tips and ideas about what you can do. My history is that I tried to control food over Halloween. I would buy it and try not to eat it before Halloween and would always end up opening the bag, eating this, eating that. And I felt really bad about myself and I felt like bad in my body and kind of like angry at myself for what I would do. And so I tried to buy it and not eat it. That didn't happen. And then I would try and not buy it, buy it so I wouldn't eat it. And it always felt like like taking this great big grip of I'm just going to hold on to not eating food. And the strategy I found that worked actually really well for quite a long time was I would either work late and not be home to give out candy so there was no need to have candy, or I would go to the gym. And I find that um, an interesting uh, uh, dichotomy. Like, you know, I didn't go home to do Halloween candy, but I'd go to the gym. So that was actually the time in my life where I was not married and didn't have kids and I could go to the gym in the evening time. And I actually generally would work out after work because that was kind of my lifestyle and it worked really well. So what I would do every Halloween is I would go to the gym and there are not many people who go to the gym on Halloween, but there are a few of us and I would go there and sometimes I wouldn't get home late enough for the trick-or-treaters to be gone. So they would still be coming around the house. And I promise you, I would go upstairs, I would turn off all the lights, have a light on in the back of the house so that nobody would know that I was home and I would not answer the door because I was afraid of having candy in the house. And I would also then other times I would go to a friend's house on Halloween. So I didn't have to have Halloween candy in the house. And it was really out of fear. It was out of fear of having candy. And I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't have the tools that I have today or the understanding that I have today to not have Halloween candy be an issue. What, where it started to become more of an issue is when I met my husband and he likes to give out Halloween candy and he likes to buy it in advance, big bags of it. And that is his thing. So I was struggling with you know, do I stay home with him and hand out candy? Do I go do something else? How do I manage this? And it was hard because I didn't know what to do about candy and how to manage it and how to really have what I, you know, what we talk about is have peace with food. And then my daughter came and she likes to go out trick or treating. She likes to go out and do that. Like all the other kids, they love to do that. And I learned some things through the process of all of this. I learned that I could have a different relationship with candy, that candy didn't have to be this big, bad, really kind of scary monster that I would face every October. And then through the whole November and December, I faced challenges with food. So what I, one of the things I learned is that there's no bad food. There's just food. And is it my right food? And I also learned through intuitive eating that I don't 
I allow myself to have candy if I want to have it. It's not a special food that I only have every once in a while. It's like, I can have it if I want. I generally choose not. It doesn't always, it isn't always my right food or my best food or my food that I want or makes my body do the things I want it to do. So I don't have it. And we talk about that a lot in emotional eating solutions. It's like, what, what is going to be your relationship with food and what, what are you going to do when it's all around? So we look to have food freedom. So how can you handle this Halloween time, part of these three months? And, and I want to encourage you to start thinking about how can I look at candy differently and really wonder how afraid are you of candy? I know a lot of people tell me they just don't even buy it. They keep it out of the house. They keep it far away because they're afraid of it. When I don't have candy in the house, it's not because I'm afraid of it. It's because I just don't want it. I don't have it here. It's not a big deal. But when we don't have it because we're afraid of it, that's when we start getting, we have difficulties when we have emotions that show up or thoughts that show up. We have difficulties then really wondering, is that candy our right food? And when we put candy in its place as just a piece of food and is it really my right food? Do I really want it? Am I hungry for it? Then it becomes less scary. It becomes less scary. The thing that I think of when I think about why is candy scary? And this is something I think you could really journal on is, is candy scary because I'm, I have a fear of, of being out of control? Am I afraid that I'm going to just go crazy around it? And I'm going to just have all of it. And I remember having those feelings. I totally remember feeling very out of control with candy and just not wanting it around because I know that if it's around, I can't control myself. And that's what I would say. So that's the fear of being out of control. There's another of uh, the fear of gaining weight. If I eat it, I'm going to get fat. If I eat it, I'm going to gain weight. Is that a fear for you? What does that mean for you that I don't eat this food that I actually really want because I'm afraid I'm going to gain weight when if it's just a part of your normal eating why would you gain weight over that? It's just a food you eat. And then you move on. It doesn't have any other um, hold over you. The other thing that I think of about why candy scares us is this fear of what we call unhealthy eating. I need to eat healthy. I need to eat healthy. I hear that so much. And I really resist that because your idea of what's healthy for you and your body is different than what's healthy for me and my body. And we all have to come up with what is my right health. And I think health, wanting to be healthy is a euphemism for I need to be thin and I need to not eat candy. When we go into life saying I've got to be very, very small and I can't have anything sweet, we set ourselves up for failure. So it becomes what we talk about is loving yourself just the way that you are and wondering, is this my right food? I promise you having candy all the time is nobody's right food. Nobody feels good eating like that. If you allowed yourself some of it, it wouldn't have so much of a hold on you. So here's, so there are some questions to get about, um, about, what is your fear of candy about? And I'll put these these questions in the in the notes. The second thing is, is what come what thoughts come up when we talk about having candy and having free access to candy? What thoughts do you have? What do you think? Mine was always, I'm gonna overeat. If I have one, I'm gonna have all of it. And and once I started to eat, I would say, Kim, you you know, you know you're gonna eat the whole thing, just eat it up anyway. And I would just eat it. And those I knew were the thoughts that compelled me. I felt compelled to overeat. So those were my thoughts of what, of what happened for me. And then what are the emotions that are coming up? What's coming up for you? Are you feeling sad, scared, lonely, bored, overwhelmed, alone? What are those emotions about? And what do you need? What do you need for those feelings? Because the candy won't take care of the feelings. Really, in the end, the candy, it doesn't. It just fills your tummy up. It gives you a lot of sugar rush energy, but it doesn't take away the feelings. It might for a little bit of time, but it doesn't solve whatever's going on. It doesn't give you the emotional fortitude that you need. So 
so think about that. What emotions are going on? So some some more journal questions that we have is, is there a fear of gaining weight? Is there a need that you're not meeting? Do you allow yourself to have candy mindfully? What have you been told about candy? Also, I was thinking about what memories do you have about candy? What family mem memories do you have? What, who gave you candy? Why did they give you candy? Often it's when we're children, it's about being given candy when we're good or because we're sad or because we're seeing a special person. But what does that candy relationship mean for you in terms of your family and the people from your past? And that could give you some ideas about what candy means for you. For me, it was a lot about a sweet treat. Like it's a treat. Oh my gosh, we get a sweet treat. We get a sweet treat because we didn't have it all the time. And now in our home, we just have, we have candy in the house. Um, I don't know what's here right now, but there's something. And if you want it, go have it if you're hungry. Um, and we talk about how we have nutrition, right? What do I need for my body to do all the things it needs to do? So really kind of think about it and think about what this candy means for you in this time where there's a lot of it around and really notice how the restriction, when you restricted yourself from candy, what that did to you. What we know is that as we restrict it, as we say, no, 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 you can't, you can't, there's going to be a moment where your guard is down and you go, I'm going to go have it. And you go at it full force, full force. And that ends up being the time where you don't feel good about yourself. I don't, you don't feel good about yourself when you do that. So let's look at candy as just a piece of food, one of the many pieces of food. What will it do for you? How will you feel? And also if you eat it more mindfully. So, so do you hear we're going into a lot of the different components, the, the am I hungry, am I full component, the emotions, what emotions are going on component, the thoughts, what, what's happening with your thoughts component, lifestyle, what's happening in your family mindfulness. How can I be more mindful and centered and present? It's really doable. I could have told you years ago that I thought it was a lost case. I thought I would never be able to um, have any kind of relationship with candy where it's like, it's just not a big deal. It doesn't bug me. I don't need to have it. It's not always my best food. It's not always my right food. Sometimes I want it, but it doesn't have a big hold on me because I put it in its proper place as just one of the many foods that I eat and, and I eat it in more of a mindful way. It's not perfect. Not hundred percent. I have emotions just like everybody else. So try that, try those things. I'll put those journal questions in the notes so you can see them. And I really encourage you to approach Halloween differently this year and just look at what candy means for you. I'll also put in the feed your soul with Kim podcast. We have other, we have podcasts on a lot on um, food and candy and the holiday trifecta all this time of year. It's really a good thing to have as a, as a resource to help you through this time, because I know it can be really, really difficult. Thank you all for joining us. I look forward to talking with you guys later. Bye-bye.